Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back live, broadcasting live all the way from an underground bunker. It's your boy Chingo Bling, and we have a special uh, series. I don't know what this could become, but, uh, you know, I hit up my boy, Georgie Casanova, yesterday, alias El Jorge Casanova. And uh, I was just like, yo, man, I, I got to pick his brain. And uh, that's who we have on the show today, man. Houston-based, internationally known artist, photographer, creative mind, uh, George Casanova. Brother, how you doing? Man, good, bro. Good, bro. Just I appreciate you having me, man. It's always a, it's always a pleasure to chat up with you, bro. All right. So, look, man, a lot of people not from H-Town, they're not going to understand the, the laid back. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know right yeah, now. Yeah, too. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We got people tuning in from everywhere. So uh, this is your second time on the uh, on my podcast. And uh, yeah. you, you've done, you already doing big things. Uh, I've seen you crank up the heat. Uh, you're focused. Um, you know, your moves, your mm. moves are always, you know, just from the outside looking in, you know, I'm like, yo, man, this dude really knows how to um, put something out that combines ideas that gets people talking and, and it creates interest. Like, mm. you know, I, I have, I have some of your art at the crib. It's the uh, poster with the, uh, all like the Houston rap, uh, rap yeah. and, stuff. and uh, a lot of people, uh, I get a lot of feedback from that. Like, yo man, I just got my poster in the mail from uh, uh, Georgie and uh, man, it's dope to see you on there or whatever. So yeah. I, I know, it, you know, it's out there. So congratulations. Uh, so first of all, how are you doing with this quarantine, man? Man, bro, um, it's I think it's positive and negative. You know what I mean? I think everybody can use like you know, uh, I don't know about everybody. I think creative wise, you know what I mean? It kind of gives you like a little time to breathe and you know, kind of reset and work on stuff that you probably ain't had time to work on or new skill sets, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But um, other than that, I'm blessed here. You know, alive, grateful. You know what I'm saying? So, so speaking of skill sets, uh, I was looking on your Instagram. And uh, you're learning how to do like 3D models. Uh, are you planning on printing some 3D figurines, or what, what's going on, brother? Oh no, I had my um, I had a good friend of mine help me with that. Um, I've always wanted to get like into figures and stuff like that. I'm big on collectibles. You know what I mean? I like when people are able to you know physically have the art in their crib, whether it be a poster or some type of keychain, something collectible. You know what I mean? So I had a homie. Uh, he's helped me start you know messing, getting to like the little figurine area. You know what I mean? Just giving people dope stuff they can have in their crib and appreciate. Yes. Uh, speaking of collectibles, uh, one of the brands that that um, that you have that has continued to be like a classic is your From the South. I don't know if you see it as a, a brand under an umbrella yeah. or, or how you treat it, but uh, I know people really jump on those in terms of uh, collectibles. Yeah, no, nah, uh, man, that was just one of them pieces of product, and I feel like everybody has it, you know, whether it be with music or a song. This is one of the pieces of product where I was like, damn, this is a dope saying. I feel like people don't use this enough. You know, I threw it on a, on a hat here. I threw it on stuff here. And before I knew it, people were like, you know, like, you know they, they love it. You know, they appreciate it. They get the message. They want to, you know, be empowered by it. And that shit really took off way more than I thought it was. So um, I've always thought, you know, it, it's, it's kind of dope because it is like its own little brand under me and like it has its own meaning and, you know, people appreciate it. So that's, that's really dope. Yeah, it, it definitely has that, um, that cultural pride aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, something that can connect. I remember last time we spoke, uh, you know, I forget what other states you have on there, but um, mm -hmm. do you have like Alabama? Does it, do you have one that's all of, like all the states? Nah, what I try to do is like, I'll do a piece with the slogan on it. And, you know, I might have a little hint of Texas or Houston on it, but for the most part, I have one where it just says, just from the South, that way anybody can rock it. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be wherever they're at, they can rock it. You know, they don't feel like they can't wear it, you know? Yeah. So um, I picture like that on some murals. Is that on any walls? Have I seen that on any walls around Houston? The slogan from the South? Yeah, the from the South, like yours? Nah, uh, actually not. Nah. I mean, I'm always open to it. If anybody wants to involve it in their work, I always feel like that. It kind of belongs to everybody. You know what I mean? I don't want people, you know, like. Hey. So, it's, hey, sometimes, hey, sometimes it, it, it really don't belong to everybody. Uh, <laughs> That's the truth. I, I don't want, I mean, I don't know if you've ever met uh, B someone, yeah. but um, I texted him the other day because I saw a, a, a beer, like a brewery. It's probably an indie, I don't know, local. I don't know. I can't remember mm -hmm. who it was. 
Um, but it, it had like the be someone thing, like artwork, and I know yeah. like two or three little clothing lines popped up with it, and yeah. and and I uh, I texted him. I was like, hey man, you know, you know, do you got a lawyer? That you know, did you license this to them? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I didn't want to dig in his business. Yeah. But, but but partially, he's like, well, some stuff we kind of yeah, we'll step in and kind of make a fuss and go after. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but. He's like, other stuff, I just feel like, you know, well, it's kind of like public domain-ish. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I, I can't stand when they paint over his thing, too, because it's, yeah. it's like, you know, it's, super. Nah, it's a weird area, bro. And that's, that's, the, that's the homie I've known him for, I've, you know, had the pleasure of knowing him for a few years now. But um, I, I see what you mean, because it's like, I, there's a difference between, like, paying homage and then just being like, oh, this is popping? Let me press up 50 shirts and sell them. And it's like, damn. Yeah. Like, and not only that, not only that, sometimes it... it it, it'd be like a big brand. Uh, imagine if Jameson hadn't, you know, y'all hadn't connected and they mm -hmm. just, they just pay, commissioned another artist to, to, Hey man, put this from the South on it with this type of lettering. And yeah. then put Jameson, Jameson times H town or something. Yeah. And we, got, we ain't got to really do it the right way with get with yeah. Georgie. Have you seen, um, have you seen LA originals? Yeah. Oh man, that was great. So, it, it was trippy because um, I've kicked it with both of them cats. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I stayed in touch throughout the years with uh, Esteban. Like, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Um, the year the year I decided to, uh, you know, post up in L.A. and work on some projects, uh, I hit him up like, hey, man, I'm looking for a place. You know, what area do you recommend? And if you recall in the documentary, they were, like, always in, um, what is it, Skid Row, like downtown. Row, yeah. Which now it's like homeless people, yoga studio, cafe, like restaurant. Yeah. Um, it's all like gentrified. But I remember asking him, "Hey, man, I'm, I'm coming to LA." Da da da. And he's like, "Man, just come, just come downtown, bro." I'm like, "Okay, well, we're downtown, like Staples Center. He's, you know, Skid Row." Yeah. I'm like, "Damn, son." <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, the reason I bring them up is because I, I met them uh, because I actually had a photo shoot with Esteban, but. I met them and I remember them literally telling me the story that's in the documentary. Like, well, first this dude got the tattoos and I was, I somehow ended up on as a road manager for these people. And I just put the play together. And anytime he tatted somebody, I make sure to get the footage, like I make sure yeah. to get the drop and, and uh, so on and so forth. And make sure 50 cent on camera, be like, yo, these cost 35,000, whatever. Just so that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so that when you're in Kentucky negotiating with somebody, you can at least get 3,500. But uh, but anyway, I bring them up because some of the moves they made, like when they would uh, work with brands or like Hollywood mm -hmm. production studios, like, yo, we got this movie coming out. Um, it's like they did a really good job of keeping it local, authentic, yeah. uh, with that nuance where people just know, like, hey, man, these are the dudes. They're, they 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 really with the people they say they with type of thing. Yeah, like they yeah. really be at the spots. Like they really get inspiration from the grassroots and they know how to, they know how to like person like yourself, they know how to process all that into the, to your brain, like a little funnel. And then mm -hmm. do, 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 do. okay, well, what elements do I like? Like the, the Georgie algorithm be like, um, <laughs> South, no, even in your head, you like Texas now delete colors. Ah, okay. I see these color. Well, okay, that's the sweatpants like that. Do, do, do. Oh, that's, and then, and then you spit out culture. Yeah. So, um, you know, I compare you guys because, you know, it. That's the sweet spot, man. You want to be, you want to be a paid artist. Like the biggest, yeah. lie, the biggest lie ever told is starving artists. It's it's a mm. lot of artists that ain't starving. Yeah. I mean, shit. If you consider Joe Rogan an artist, which he is. He, he, he ain't starving either. <laughs> I saw him. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He ain't tripping. Um, so, yeah, man, you, you, you've done everything from skateboards and, and all kind of stuff. And recently, uh, I saw on your Instagram, you, you conducted, you hosted and curated a uh, live, live from the quarantine, like a, a music session. Yeah. Uh, how did that come about? Man, um, the good thing is that uh, since, like, you know, I work with Jameson and I've been able to kind of, like, put these events together, that I really like, you know, I really like messing with them because they actually care about the culture and they want to see who's up and coming and they want to support those people, you know what I mean? So, like, I wanted to just kind of shine a light on some of the up and coming artists, you know what I mean? Like, those those two people I chose, which is uh, Lily and Jack Freeman, are amazing artists. And, like, I'm always, I'm big on, like, 
showing support and showcasing anybody coming up and doing their thing. Cause like, for me, it feels like I would have wanted somebody to do that for me coming up. So why not spread love and be like, yo, he's killing it. She's killing it. Y'all need to check them out. You know, whether it's two fans or five new fans, those are people that can support them now, you know? And, and speaking of supporting artists, brother, uh, you did something amazing recently. <laughs> Uh, where I, I'm gonna let you tell it, but from the outside looking in, it was just like one day you just got inspired to you felt like giving away some money. So, so tell us about that. Yeah, man. Um, no, nah, I've been like on social media a lot, like you know, just like anybody else, you know, I had a lot of downtime, and um, I was just it, it, I started seeing like even like close homies of mine like tweet like, "Yo, this is affecting me crazy." Like I had this job dropped, or damn, you know, I had all these jobs just dropped. And, um, I, a lot of people don't consider the fact that, you know, all this content we get nowadays from photographers and music artists and painters, all that. Yeah, everybody has fun reposting them and shit, but nobody thinks about the fact that, like, yo, a lot of these people, that's all they do for a living. You know what I mean? If you're a photographer, you might do that full time. You have five or six gigs get canceled because, you know, everything that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Your income gone. You know, you didn't see it coming. You you were thinking, like, oh, I'm going <laughs> next month you know so like it hit everybody crazy you know hey, like, hey, you, hey you you preaching to the choir man sound like you talking exactly to me like you know like you had like a let's just say you had like a comedy tour right and you had all these <laughs> cities lined up <laughs> see see and, and it's like come and just snatched them off the table exactly so I'm, I'm looking at this i'm like damn bro like i know you know everybody's talking about helping other people but a lot of people don't think about the fact that a lot of these artists self-employed they have a way harder time of getting support and getting funds and you know other people, you know, and I'm just like, dog, I just, I really want to help them. So um, the first thing I thought of was like, man, what's the way I can help them without making it too crazy? You know what I mean? I, 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 things gotten a little bit safer now, you know, I think it's still a little sketchy, but you know, originally I wanted to try maybe some shirts or hats, but the problem with that is like, you want to eliminate that many people touching the objects just so like, if somebody buys something, it's safe for them to purchase it. You know, you might do t-shirts, the printer going to touch it, the people that manufacture the t-shirts are going to touch it. You know, so I was like, you know, one thing I've always had the, the ability to do is, I, you know, I print a lot of my own prints. I keep them limited, but I still print a lot of my own prints. So I was like, man, if I could, you know, control a certain amount of prints, you know, um, get them out to the people, it'll be safe. You know, I, I, I'll feel safe about getting them out to the customers and I can control the inventory and I don't have to take a large hit and I can give away a, most of this money that I got from the products and give it to the hands of some of the artists that need it the most, you know? So at first, I was like, if you know, like, man, one of the people will support, but man, people came out the door swinging, ready to support all the artists, man. And um, I was able to kind of like set up an email, get people to like get all the artists, whatever area you were in. If you're a tattoo artist, photographer, a music artist, a painter, I was like, yo, just email me here, you know, tell me what you need help on, and we're going to send you this paper immediately. So, you know, we did that. Um, I posted a picture on my Instagram, shipping all the orders out. Like, man, it was. I ain't gonna lie, bro. It was so much work, but at the end of the day, like, it was just like, man, it was worth it. We got all the funds to people who needed it. And that hey, was hey, the the average cat would have ran off on the plug with that. <laughs> uh, hey, man, we ain't seen Georgie on social media in about six <laughs> weeks. Like, uh, somebody said they saw him in the Bahamas, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, it was, it was it was great, man. I, um, I told everybody like just in, everybody who ordered because there was orders from everywhere. There's a lot of orders from Houston. There's a lot of orders from other states. Um, I made sure to tell everybody, yo, y'all, you know, we really appreciate the shit. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so you brought back you brought back a limited print, right? Like yeah, man. that was in demand that had been sold out. Yeah, cause I, I still get like DMs to restock certain prints, and I'm just like, yo, I'm not really in a rush. I don't really like doing the cash grabs. Like, I I still want to make sure that people who have the art feel like you know, like they have a piece of you know, like culture that's, that's, that's has value. So. You know, I just wanted, I, you know, I, I didn't rush it. And then finally, when I was thinking, I was like, yo, this perfect time. It's been a few years like since I really restocked everything. So. Yeah. And 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 um, you say you do your own prints. You talking about like the posters or like t-shirts? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, prints, my own photo prints. Uh, man, I, I, I still got my own gallery printer. So I'm, I'm able to print on my own inventory and, you know, like kind of control it and quality inspect it and all that. That's what's up, man. And um, so what, what do you... uh? What did you come out of this quarantine? I mean, like you kind of the, uh, you know, the economy's opening back up, but like, what kind of habits did you, like good habits did you like, oh, like me, for example, I, I started fucking around in the garden, uh, doing these little home workouts, uh, taking walks. And uh, the crazy thing is like, since we're home all together so much and having meals together, like we, it's like, hey, we, ble we, uh, we blessing the food, you know, 
Like it's one. It's not one of those like, oh, we just started eating. Now it's like, hey, this is one of the little things we do that we want to keep. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the good habits. You know, call my parents more often. More yeah. often. Um, uh, how about yourself? Um, no, nah, I, I think, uh, man, honestly, I think reflection, bro, like this, this really gave me time to, uh, of course, family, you know what I mean? I love catching up with them, make sure everybody's okay right now, but, um, just to be able to chill and take a second to kind of, you know, take everything in. I'm big on, like, I tell people all the time, like, I'm big on breaks. Like, I'm big on, like, you know, taking a second to step away from stuff, because I feel like sometimes when you rush things too much, it might not be what you wanted. So, like, I've been able to take breaks, kind of, like, you know, get back into the creative process of, like, you know, being inspired from movies and just, just really enjoying, you know, being able to have time off and do what I want artistically right now. Because most of the time it's go, 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 go. And it's like, damn, I can't even catch an hour or two to myself just to kind of, like, reset. But Man, um, biggest takeaway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I had a conversation yesterday, and um, it's uh, the guy that um, – and anyway, what did he say? What did he tell me? He said, he said, he was like, Chingo, remember when I saw you at that show? He said, I, I told you and your wife. He said, the problem with these two is going to be, you know, um, the, what did he say? He's like, the, don't let the tour keep you from a, a career, basically. So, so in other words, you, you, you go, 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 rush, 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 uh, next city, promote, uh, come back, repack, whatever, whatever. And um, he's like, you know, that's what this time has served us to, like you were saying, you know, plan, strategize, just take a little breather, <clears throat> look at it from a different angle. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm like, shit, we've been going live more often. And that's some shit I never would do. It'd be like, live for what? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, who does that? And um, just different little, earlier you had, you had said um, you were learning new skills too. And um, that's one thing I always uh, promote and preach to anybody that'll listen. It could be my kids, anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, the concept of a talent stack. Like once yeah. you, you start to combine a variety of different skills from different categories, then they start to mesh a little bit different in your brain. So let's say uh, you learn something from carpentry that you end up applying to uh, Photoshop. Yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah exactly. exactly. So, like, what kind of, what, you, you mentioned skills. What kind of stuff are you talking about? Man, shit. Uh, I think, like, immediately, like, when we went to, like, you know, lockdown and had, like, you know, I, I had time free. Uh, one of the things, like, I dabbled with was uh, making a mu music video look like a video game. So, um, I, told my, I told my bro Les, like, yo, he just dropped some new music. I got time right now to kind of like do whatever creatively I want. I'm gonna take one of your songs. I'm gonna make it look like a music video. I mean, I'll make it look like a video game, like you know, like a like some 12 bit, like you know, Super Mario. That was one of the first projects I did. It took me like four days, and I was like, man, I think I can do this. You know, I dabbled in it before. I never really did that much work before, and uh, I did it. And like, dog, that shit came out. It's still it's crazy because it's only it's short. It's only like two minutes and thirty seconds, something like that. But it literally looks like. We took less and we put him in a music video for a video game and his music playing, but like he's, he goes on his own little adventure. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but it's on my Instagram when you get a chance. Oh, um, when, when y'all dropped it a couple weeks ago or when? Uh, it was like the first week. Uh, let me see. Oh, I, I'll check it out. I was just curious. Uh, March 27th. But um, yeah, no, nah, that was one of the first things I did. I was like, man, I want to kind of push myself visually. So we, we knocked that out. And then I think after finishing that, it kind of like, you know, I told myself like, damn, I did that shit, you know, it's crazy what you can do when you actually got time and you really tell yourself like, man, fuck it, I'm gonna do this. Like, let's do it, let's make it work, you know? And that applies to a lot of people because it's like, that might be something that, you know, you might be like, I ain't got the time, I don't want to do that, I don't feel like it. Say, go for it, you know, it ain't nothing but a try. And uh, have you been um, dabbling like with your photography? Cause uh, you, you take some dope photos uh, throughout the years, a lot of like CD covers and stuff like that. and. Um, I'm actually in the process of uh, <clears throat> just, you know, rethinking, because I get people asking me all the time, man, when, when are we going to see the version of you with the boots and where's, you know, where's the thermal yeah. kick? And I'm like, hey, I'm down, but I want the shit to be like right. fucking dope as shit. Not just, right. oh, I saw him at H-E-B with his boots. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's yeah. not like, oh, you just taking a shower with your cowboy hat on. It's, <laughs> I want it to be like, uh, like, yo, okay, today, we're going to bring him out, but it's going to be a dope photo shoot with, like, Georgia, for example. 
exactly. and this is the concept and this is the, the outfits and these are the ang- these is where the lights are going to go and we mm-hmm. got these props or whatever uh shit like that but uh, have you been uh have you been fucking with uh photography lately oh uh, man honestly i just i've been i've been uh i've been like trying to schedule shoots you know what i mean like keep it real safe so like i'm trying to pick days and, and make it safe where it's just like it, it maybe just me and the person or maybe me and one or two you know like just real real like you know it'll make it awkward and make sure everybody's feel comfortable so stuff like that but um i'm just yeah. like on a daily basis but it's just more honestly just booking and planning and be like you know this day we're gonna try and stuff like that yeah um i was gonna ask you about um oh have you been hearing um like i don't know if you listen to joe rogan and them but like a, a bunch of like big names in the comedy world uh, are have been thrown around like man we're they're frustrated with their california governor and their mayor so they're like man you know how big of a house i could get and waco and you know what i mean i can shoot my guns yeah. i got amazing uh, and I, I've been seeing that. But yeah, like, like, you know, I guess let's just talk about like, you know, Houston culture and like how lucky we are to live in this hot, humid, cultural, <laughs> you know, diverse food. Uh, what What are some of your favorite things, man, about about the city? Because I know you've you've been everywhere, Japan. You've been all these places. But what is it about home? Man, I, I think it's just the authenticity, bro. I think there's a lot of stuff that we have here that everybody looks up to or gets inspired to from. And I try, that's actually what I try to put inside of like the, the, the merch or, or the art, bro. It's like, I try to make, pe- make people like, yo, be proud. You know what I mean? Like we have a lot of things that, you know, a lot of people don't have. And, you know, of course, you know, we'll always have our issues just like any other city, but it's like, I try to, you know, influence that and everything else. But I mean, shit, but if you're talking just on a, on a, on a, on a city level, bro, I mean, you're talking about everything from food to culture, people to um, our artists our art our, like our catalog goes crazy back with artists um i mean we got a lot to be proud of but it's cool because even like you said seeing people be like damn you know i can go to texas and i can give me a mansion for 300 like yeah we got a lot of beautiful things and space is one of them you know so it, it's dope seeing people be like you know because before all i see is the jokes with they just ride horses they ain't got nothing over there it ain't nothing but flatland so it's like no nah, we got some stuff bro and now, and now that people are able to like work kind of remotely to where mm-hmm. it's like, you know, you could literally be based out of Boston or something or Ohio or anywhere yeah. and work for a whole bunch of people <laughs> or be freelance or have like your Patreon. Or, I mean, there's just a, a popping podcast. There's just so many <clears throat> different things um, where the future is headed to, man. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that really trips me out. It's like, what's the new what's the next thing like you know you got elon musk talking about Neuralink, and um are you familiar with the uh, simulation theory no what's that oh man you gotta look into this so basically i'll send you a podcast to listen to but um simulation theory they're saying that it's kind of debunking the uh darwin's theory of evolution mm. so the argument is that if we present day 2020 we're able to have like sims computer games and there's all kind of like simulators and simulation yeah. because our computers are strong enough to create little worlds like video games right yeah, yeah. To create worlds. and so the argument is if our society is capable of making you know one any society that's capable of making one simulation they're probably going to make s- multiple um and then the argument is any society that's advanced enough is going to have even more advanced uh simulations where the the inhabitants are self-aware but they think they're flesh and blood like and you know it's like well i am flesh and blood it's like yeah, yeah. but you keep in. it's like well, what is that it's like what's well, matter okay what the fuck is matter you know what i mean it's like yeah. what's out there space it's like well can you ever reach the end of it or how does that work like well yeah. one you can't go faster than the speed of light so you're never really gonna know you're in a game type of thing uh, so, in a nutshell, the argument is, it's it's more probable. If you would say that there, there's multiple simulations, it's more probable that you're in a simulation than in a naturally occurring organic universe of like, a, had its own Big Bang on its own, yeah. and, and all the little molecules, everything happened just right, the sun, and you know, they... they you know, they start walking upright and they discovered uh, fire and yeah. what have you. Uh, but 
Anyway, that's that's ba- I don't know what kind of weed I smoke, but that's basically <laughs> <laughs> that's basically it. It's like yeah. it's it's more probable that we're living in a simulation than it being oh we're just one of the lucky organic we just kind of happened on our own something and, happened and we made it this far yeah uh, so I, I you know don't nobody know but it's interesting how simulation theory argues that we have a creator so mm. it's almost like all the religious people are like. No, it, Darwin, motherfuckers, like we're atheists and we all from chimps, and it, we, they looking crazy. Like, nah, man, I feel like somebody created us. Like, they're not looking crazy no more. <laughs> I, man, I see. You know, I'm not. I'm, I think uh, I'm not opposed to like people having their own thoughts. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of even even in the the craziness, I feel like people still discover things that are useful in one way or another. You know what I mean? So it's like either way, you're still thinking. You're still you know creating. Yeah, either way, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I think it benefits one way or another. It ain't always beneficial, but I think creating and thinking your own way, it's gonna something's gonna come out of it, you know. So man, right now, so. man, can you imagine uh, some fucking? Uh, they create like a virtual reality world, and in that world, you could like dress your little avatar up, and then you selling clothes in that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But see, I, and I, that, that I feel like that'll come eventually because it's like, all right. So let's say, for example, people play. Because um, even I play PlayStation. Let's say you play PlayStation for three, two, three hours. Right? It's just gonna get more advanced to the point of where, like, because even some kids, I'm sure they spend eight or nine hours a day. It's just gonna get to the point where it's so advanced, it's so technical, so crazy, so involved that you're just probably gonna be there for fifteen, eighteen. You know, people might not see you. You, you stayed in that world for a whole twenty-four hours. You know. So, I, I mean, stuff like that will come eventually, especially with everything just keep it getting crazy and updating and more, get video games getting more complex and integrated. Stuff like that. Yeah, it's like C- CGI is... I mean, have you seen uh, Little Michaela on Instagram? Yes. I mean, that's prime example of like, bro... Where, where things can go, bro. That, that's exactly it. It's like, I've seen some funny memes. Like, they'll take they'll take a screenshot of some shit she posted where she's just, like, all posing. And then the caption, <laughs> like, you know, sometimes don't you be thinking, like, damn, life's a trip or something. And, and then, and then they, they screenshot where the person uh, commented, like, first of all, bitch, what the fuck are you? Or something. <laughs> hey, but no, that's, that's a prime example right there. It's, it's, it's stuff can get really, really crazy quick. And... It, it, it reminds me of like what you said earlier. You said like Houston is known for, or part of our appeal is the, just the authenticity. It's transparent. Mm-hmm. Like what you see is what you get. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the most part, people do what they say around here. Uh, yep. We, we kind of at a different pace. We're in our own bubble. We're very like independent spirited. And uh, mm-hmm. I know that was like my North star when I was navigating the music business. Like, you know, different people navigated it from, their perspective and, and where they're from or whatever. But I just knew, like in the beginning, man, I just looked up to Jay Prince and like Master P and people mm-hmm. that had ownership. I looked up to them so much that when offers would come, I would refer to my constitution, right? So um, at, at this point, we were adhering to this policy, which is like mm-hmm. we kind of want greater control because I didn't know what Chingo Bling was. Like I was still trying to figure out like, some people see me as parody and Weird Al, but some people want me to try and fill this person's shoes. Mm-hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying? And some people see me as just a Texas thing. And and you have it's like being a Houston-based chef. You you're expected to cook with some Houston ingredients. Yeah. Thing. And sometimes sometimes that could be like cool because yeah, I want this in my palate. You know, but uh, other times it's like, okay, but I'm gonna hit you with some other stuff that mm-hmm. you know might be a little bit ahead of its time or whatever. Nah, but, that's uh, yeah. true. And, hey, that, that, and you always have to kind of make a balance, you know what I mean? Because there's still people that might be like, well, that's too Houston or that's too Texas or that's too Southern. So, you know what I mean? It's kind of like walking the line, but at the same time, it's like, you know, trying to create something dope for people to enjoy just for where they're from and making sure that like, man, I'm, I want to make sure this appeals to everybody, even if they're not here, you know? So, I mean, actually, you, you know more than anybody, you know, it's just like, you trying to trying to make sure that you can please everybody and make something that everybody can appreciate, you know, it's, it's hard. Yeah, no, nah, that's it. I, man, I would argue that um, that idea, it, sometimes it's best to keep it out of your head. Like, like anything that has to do with perfection, anything that has mm-hmm. to do with like, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
I guess where the end goal is yeah. not upsetting too many people or not being too polarizing mm -hmm. because it is very hard. Like just, just the fact that you included me on that poster, I, I, I already knew I was already like, Ooh, I don't want to see the comments on this. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I don't want to be in no, nobody's debate. Like you can have it. I mean, it's a, in a way you want to be relevant enough to where somebody's arguing on your behalf at a barbershop, you know, but I was like, man, okay, Georgie, uh, well, shit, man, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm glad you decided that, but it's probably gonna be a lot. Actually, I think I did see a comment from somebody yeah. A lot, I, did see a comment. I did see a comment from somebody that was kind of like, I think they didn't understand it was one artist's interpretation. Uh, and he, he wasn't saying those are the only ones. He wasn't saying those are the only ones that are ever going to make it. He wasn't mm -hmm. saying none of the new people are good. But for whatever reason, people took it like it was a complex top 10. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how people are always gonna take it. You know, it's gonna be like, all right, this is his list. It's wrong. It don't look nothing like mine. This is not right. But it's like, I try to explain it just pretty much the same way you said it. Like this is my interpretation of people who I feel like influence shit and made a difference. You know what I mean? And if it, if you don't agree, and you know, ten people need to be swapped in your head, you're more than welcome to make your own your own uh your own design and and then put the people on there that made a difference. But that's how I feel. Of course, that's how a lot of complaints. You know what I mean? From 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 you being on there to Man, pretty much every those things playing about probably like half the list. Like, why is he in there? You could have swapped him for this person. And it's like, well, you know, but more. But the good thing was, like, there was a lot of debates that I saw, like, even when people reposted it. But for the majority, like 80%, it was low. Like, a lot of people, you know, they liked it. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm not tripping because, you know, it's trippy, man. One thing that I'm learning, I'm 40. One thing I'm learning is that everybody lives in their own reality yeah. so there is no way people will ever agree 100 percent on some shit because no. we have a heated debate with somebody and it's like hold on time out like you're looking at that word different than than how he's looking at that word or yeah. for example when people be like man that's not fair well nothing is ever going to be fair because your idea of fair is going to be different than their definition of fair uh i mean so on and so forth um, you know, like, for example, you can have a, a, like a Muslim and a Christian, like sitting together on a park bench and they both eating a sandwich. They're probably having a, a nice conversation about the weather and, and or whatever, right? They're, they're coexisting. They have families. They have a ton in, in common and they, and they believe different things. Mm -hmm. So technically they're operating in the same world with very fundamentally different beliefs. So like, they function perfectly in society, but there are other religions too. So therefore, everybody, you're able to live your life while having your own little bubble reality. Like you see it every day on the news where it'll be like, aha, uh -huh, he said this. One half, one half that represents one team is like, see, racist. Yep. You know, it's right there. And then the other half that watches a different news network that believes in different stuff, they're like, yeah, but you know, I heard the same exact thing, but I didn't see it as racist or whatever. Yeah. Like, I was just saying. <laughs> and yeah. and just artistically, man, it's almost like that has helped free, free me up because, mm -hmm. you know, I look at it like, I mean, everyone, like, for example, if I tell a joke on stage, I can already just free myself up that, like, 20% of the room is might misinterpret everything mm -hmm. I said. Another 20% pride in here. But this remaining 60%, they cracking the fuck up because they, mm -hmm. they got it and they painted the picture in their head. I'm just saying words and I'm doing subtle faces, but in their mind, they see the car, they see my dad's, yeah. they see the, 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 the whole the, picture. Yeah, so, but they paint, they cast it in their head. But, uh, and, man, it's, and it's a positive and negative because I think uh, it sparks, whether, whether, whatever the topic may be, it sparks uh, conversation, you know what I mean? And that's a big thing on like even social media and everything nowadays. Like sometimes that's bad, but at the same time it gets people talking, you know. And I think all that leads to like people just communicating and telling their opinion. And yeah, sometimes it goes crazy. Some people can't get their opinion across without arguing, but at the same time, it's like when people talking about a subject, you know, it's still them talking about. It, you know, so it's, it's it's good. It has its ways. So so let me let me ask you this as we uh, wrap up. Um, I want to ask you. Um, 
what is your morning routine like? Um, shit. Um, or you could do night routine if that one's more. Yeah. Um, honestly, start the day off the same way. I, I check check uh check emails and then I get my to do list. Uh, I'm, I'm big on writing down what I need to do for the day. I know some people do like notepad and like stuff like that, but I'm like if I don't physically see it in front of me or next to me, you know, I might forget. So I'm big on writing notes like. And sometimes my desk is covered in sticky notes and, and, and I'll get it done though. You know, I, I look forward to crossing things out throughout the day. You know, it might be 10 things like, oh, you need to get these done today. And it's like, oh, done, done, done. Trash it up at the end of the day, throw it away. Next morning, start fresh. Boom, new list. What needs to get done today? So that, that's, that, that keeps me on track. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. V visually writing it down. And, um, another thing I, I like to, uh, think about is, uh, like, goals versus systems mm -hmm. so uh, let's say the goal is like man i want to drop five pounds by september or whatever mm -hmm. uh, well that's the goal right but the system mm -hmm. is like all right i'm hire a trainer or i'm gonna make sure i jog every morning or whatever the case may be um wh what is one of your favorite like i guess go to systems what um whether it's like you know i make sure i do x amount of photoshop or whatever mm -hmm. what, what are some of your systems that you use mm -hmm. Man, I, 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 so basically since I'm able to kind of do like a little bit of everything, you know, photo, video, whatever, um, I'll kind of like focus an area on like, let's say, for example, I feel like I haven't done enough video, like this, 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 this quarter, I haven't done enough video. I'll make sure that like next month, that's what I dedicate to. And that's where my mind is at. And I try, you know, even if I have to make a note of it, it's like, yo, this month I have to dedicate it to this. I feel like I've been slacking. That's what I have to do. And just knowing that that's what I have to look forward to next month, my mindset is already on. All right, let's start searching. Let's, let's look up recent videos. Let's look up some of my past work. You know, keep that, keep your mind going, keep motivated. Because it's, it's one thing to tell yourself like, oh, next month, you know, I want to learn Photoshop. And you just kind of keep it in your head. Keep like that. Well, if you're not taking no action, you're obviously not going to do nothing. You know, make some notes, write some goals. What do you want to do in Photoshop? You want to put your first CD cover together? Write that down. Start looking up stuff. You don't have to go into action now, but even researching is progress. You know what I mean? So. Um, I, I, even, I even tell my homies sometimes, it's like, you got you to gotta take the first step. Start Googling, start searching. You know, even if you don't open Photoshop today, get on YouTube, start looking up what you need. And I mean, that'll all lead to progress. You know, as long as you're making at least one step towards it, at least, you know, it's, it's progress. It's better than nothing. Uh, all righty, man. So uh, let them know um, what, what new project you want them to uh, go check out. What, what new product you drop? Oh man, I, I got a few things I'm working on. I know a lot of people are asking about gear and stuff like that. Just how we're talking about, like, you know, from the south, that's taking kind of like its own. Uh, it's created its, its, itself into something big. So I'm, I'm coming back to that because I know like some people want to tease and stuff like that. But besides that, it's just a lot of little things. Man, I got some collabs coming up with some amazing artists as far as like products. Uh, can't touch into them because like you know how the stuff goes. Sometimes it might not come out. Sometimes it might, but um, definitely rough stages. But I got uh, some some really dope products coming out, and then I'm hoping to. Even with you, you know, when you get some free time, I want to get back to, you know, working with the artists when the city clears up and, you know, we can do stuff safely, videos, photos, you know, the whole nine. Well, yeah, man, keep me in mind if uh, if you stumble across a certain vibe or something, you're like, you know what, I'm going to see if this fool's down to do uh, mm -hmm. a cartoon, you know what I'm saying, some yeah. crazy ass shit. But, um, yo, your social media, uh, Instagram, at Georgie, right? Yeah, J O R G E Y. That's the website, um, and then my, I mean that's the Instagram, and then the website is Georgie J O R G E Y with the S. So Georgies .com and you can check out all my past work and any of the new stuff we got coming up. I'm gonna announce it on those two. Awesome, brother. Hey, man, you you might have to uh, uh, come interior decorate some shit, put some little skateboards. I say from the south. <laughs> I got you. Fly shit. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, no, I appreciate you having me, and it's always I told you it's always dope to chop it up with you. you know? All righty, brother. Hey, man, respect. Keep killing it. And uh, thanks for uh, coming on to the show, man. Have a good one. Pleasure. You too, bro. All right, bro. Peace.